Good afternoon, a warm welcome to all. I'm uh, Manjunath, working with Sangro uh, for, as a technical, manage, a technical manager. Uh, today, this session is basically about uh, technical uh, challenges and development in uh, large-scale PV plants. Uh, these, uh, these are the following agenda uh, for the session. Uh, we'll talk about the present situ uh, situation of the PV and how uh, PV plant is diversified. Second, uh, second session is agenda about uh, development and solar inverters. And uh, third, the third session is about PV system application. Fourth is followed by a storage. Okay. Uh, as we see here, like uh, it's no longer like in a PV is only used for ground utility scale power plants. It's it's, it's gone deep roots now. So we are able to support with utility uh, water surface plants. It's commercial rooftop, residential. So it's got a wide range of applications, and each application has its own uh, advantages. And uh, with respect to the application itself, the solar inverters needs to be uh, suitable for the application. So we, this session is mainly about how, what are the different markets and the inverters based on that. And so uh, like the, this slide talks about how, uh, how important uh, you're talking about how a buyer seller works. So uh, let's talk about a ROI. So ROI is basically for a seller. So he wants to uh, sell the plant or to sell the power to a buyer. So buyer will be a grid. And energy intranet is a feature where there's multiple sources of energy. So let's talk about each perspective for a buyer and a seller. So for a, uh, for a buyer, like a grid or a utility, uh, what does he want? He wants, as, as the renewable energy penetration keeps on increasing, so there is issues of uh, grid stability and fast, uh, fast response like uh, static wire generator, everything needs to be taken care of. So he's more concerned about that and he wants to reduce the, he wants uh, the energy to be uh, produced at a lower cost. So that is what the uh, 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 buyer would want. But with regards to a seller, he wants a, a improved ROI. So what, in, in order to get an, a better ROI, you should have a high yield, low M&M cost, and a better uh, efficient uh, plant. So this is, what, this is what a buyer would want. And uh, with regards to energy internet, like uh, there's multiple sources of energy like we discussed right now. So we're discussing about thermal plants, we're discussing about wind, uh, uh, wave energy, solar. Each energy mix is ca contributing to the AC bus solution will have a complicated uh, like AC bus uh, solution. So that relates to a grid stability. So we'll just try and address all these situations in this session. So uh, development of solar inverters. So we are discussing about how to improve ROI. So if you want to improve ROI, which means uh, you want to have a uh, lower cost, a uh, better yield, and a uh, higher efficient uh, solar modules and inverters. Uh, so uh, in order to achieve that, like uh, we as Ungrow uh, are competitive with 99% efficiency and uh, with friendly connection, which means for a grid, we are give, able to give all the grid support features like uh, if, uh, uh, low, uh, grid stability features like LVRT, ZVRT, HVRT, all the grid stability features with including static bar generator as well. So uh, as uh, with comments to energy internet, we talk about so storage, uh, PV uh, coming together and work as a, a solution that we foresee and how SunGrow is ready for this solution as well. So uh, just in the slide, we just want to brief about the advancements which is happening in the PV uh, sector itself. You can see uh, we discussed about dual glass panel, high efficiency module, uh, smart modules. So that's what is happening uh, in the PV modules in the near future. The second thing is in structures, we're discussing about single axis, dual axis uh, trackers. Uh, in, uh, in junction boxes, we are talking about 1500 volts modules with string monitoring solution. Uh, and with inverters, uh, there's been a lot of uh, because the core design is based on the inverter selection. So once you design, select the inverter, the modules, everything will fall, fall in place. So you have to have an inverter which is very high efficient, more reliable, which can take high DC ratio, uh, which can give you some extra as well, which 10% extra uh, with regards to the inverter output. So, and will, uh, which will have a more, uh, which will give you more output and, with, uh, and better ROI. So with regards to the transformer, uh, there's talk about kit solution. So the inverter comes with, in a single container with a, a transformer, that's what we call as skid solution. And we were talking about how to disconnect the HT side uh, with, during night because the transformer takes a lot of reactive current. So you get penalized for that. So, and finally, with uh, respect to grid, like you know, we, uh, grid, uh, grid wants to have a faster response, more grid stability features. 
So we as Sangro uh, like are committed to uh, provide uh, best uh, in, uh, best solar inverters. So this is our uh, features. We give anti EPID uh, production. We give high efficiency uh, solar inverters. So with high reliability and 10% uh, uh, loading on the AC side as well. So which is already complying with to all grid, grid friendly features. So uh, now we talk about uh, the bigger block sizes. So as many EPC players wants to reduce the cost, even the developer will want to reduce the cost on to get a better ROI. So this is the uh, like, you know trend line we're talking about. If we're having a 500 kilowatt window inverter. Now we're having close to about 2.53 megawatt or 4 megawatt single inverters. So you can see we can offer in two uh, thousand volts and fifteen hundred volts. So we can offer indoor inverters, string inverters, and container solutions as well. Uh, as uh, I mean, uh, Sunil also suggested that we uh, provide some container solution in India. So and uh, we uh, go with the block size of five megawatt, which is connected to a single transformer. So we go to uh, uh, challenge ourselves and move to a five megawatt. Uh, container solutions with transformers, so it's a 40 feet container which is has uh, uh, transformer back to back, so it is easy to transport. It's got a single point uh, on them uh, accountability, so that makes everything job easier. So, with regards to 1500 volts, we already uh, like uh, a lot of colleagues have already shared a lot of information about 1500 volts advantages. So, with uh, 1500 volts going with that, like you can reduce your ACBs. Your uh, losses on the cables comes down. Your prices comes down. So we see a lot of future and 1500 volts. The market is moving towards 1500 volts, and we are we as Angro are already ready for 1500 volt solution. So uh, we talked about grid stability. Uh, conventionally, we are using APFC panels or static bar generators, but uh, the the trend has changed, and the solar inverters are already able to give uh, the SVG feature, the uh, the bar generator in the night as a built-in feature. So, which can give you more uh, faster response rate compared to a, a traditional uh, static bar generator. So, the, how does this work? Like, you know, you have a, a meter and a current sensor or the. Uh, I'll wind up faster. So, uh, uh, we'll uh, have a current sensor at the back and we have an energy meter which can uh, sense the power factor and which can feed the. Inverter with the uh, right power factor based on that, the static bar can ca compensate. So, these are some advantages we can see here. So, uh, with regards to tracker, like we see a lot of uh, improvements in tracker itself. The market has changed in tracker. So, you can see in, uh, in 2016 only about 5 gigawatt was installed, but in 2016, we've seen almost a double of close to 12.6. So we're forecasting uh, that the, uh, the trend is towards the tracker to get a better uh, uh, IRR and uh, better LS LCOE. So uh, with regards to uh, change in the system design itself, how you simulate, uh, how you uh, get the outputs of the PV simulation is, is already there. So it's time's up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Navitas. Yeah. Good afternoon. Myself Gaurav from Navitas Solar. Navitas is the manufacturing company of the modules and capacity of 200 megawatt running. Especially focused for the EPC player, developer, and all state holder NC, and modules as per the requirement with high efficiency cells and quality parameters. Covering all market, including all SNAs, Northern, Central, West, South. Focus to the major EPC player, as we are doing in West Central region also, especially states. Maharashtra and Gujarat. Technology for point of view, we are using 18 plus cells efficiency, especially for the and we are also supplied perk cells and efficiency more than 22% as per the requirement for the market purpose. Maybe, maybe, maybe you talk about exports of uh, Indian manufacturers. Yes, especially like we are export to the Middle East companies countries, especially for the Gulf countries and African countries. And currently, we are targeting to the Indian Indian market. As per the market for the all SNS and RESCO projects and CapEx model and RESCO both. Actually, right now, we are, I'm not having any PPT model. But yesterday, just a 
got the message maybe we discuss during the yes. uh, discussion session no? right okay yeah, thank you we will talk mr mr gupta from hi good afternoon everyone my name is satish gupta and i come from tata power solar uh i think uh, i mean i'm uh, the cfo there and uh, i would like to voice over what rishi said that uh, as far as uh, we from the finance fraternity is concerned we are really concerned about our money and uh, when we borrow yes we are also equally bothered about how the the uh, funding fraternity would be it yes there are surely issues which are which are moving around these days on terms of Uh, government, especially honoring their PPAs, but I'm pretty sure that it is a it is a temporary feature. I mean, otherwise this industry will surely die down. And uh, so, to that extent, though I agree and still disagree with him. <laughs> and uh, yes, uh, on rooftop there are in fact not only the PPA challenges, but I think there are still much more challenges because there. you are putting up the establishment onto somebody else's roof where you may you may not have an excess it is not like automobile uh, uh, funding where okay the the lender can take possession of the of the car and uh, then still recover some more money but here i mean uh, the the owner of that premises may not allow you even inside so those are surely some more challenges associated with it anyway so here i'm uh, trying to really challenge the though we have we did not have much discussion on the technology here and we are largely trying to voice over on the epc of large projects and uh, rooftops uh, but i think the more technology is into manufacturing it can be into solar cells pv modules uh upward downward downstreams um we had presentation on uh, on various components a uh, trackers for example or presentations on uh, uh, on the inverters uh, but i think still module plays a major role and in india uh, with made in india first that we have i think uh, government is also trying to push a lot on made in india cells and modules historically as yes, there had been a protection in the dcr but then that uh, that went off uh, when we were challenged into wto uh, still what i hear is that yes government is still trying to protect the indian industry uh, by one way or the other and latest being the add and uh, and maybe safeguard duties uh, but coming back on to the technology if we really do not want any protection right but still if we want to be independent i think there are still a lot of challenges that we all are facing or are due to be faced uh i think most of us would have seen all these slides but i still want to voice over i think uh, the global market is about 100 gigawatt maybe by though here it is 2020 uh, but maybe by 19 or 18 even uh, we can really see that the installations would be to the extent of 100 gigawatt so there is a huge market uh this is uh, there was a small company uh solexent who predicted uh, that in about 2008 when uh, i think a lot of solar companies really made money the reason was that the asps were very high the volumes were low but on the other hand if you really want to make uh, i mean expand and want to grow into solar the rates have to come down so what happened by 2010 i think a lot of uh, chinese uh, companies really expanded and so did others and uh, in india also there were companies like mozabear or indo solar and couple of other con uh, companies which really went into uh, uh, making uh, uh, solar cells and modules uh probably the next slide oh it doesn't yeah so if you really see the first four blocks so there the capacity is the green line is the capacity and the red is the the pickup or or how the installations were happening so there if we see there was a huge gap 
almost 50% was the demand, whereas the capacities were 2x. So with the result, there was a lot many companies who really either got bankrupt during 12-13, uh, by the time 12-13, or they were taken over, or I mean, they just died down. And uh, if you see, uh, I mean, uh, I have put up some uh, uh, data there. In 2012, if you see the number of companies, they were either gone bankrupt or closed down their shutters or were acquired, the list is huge, right? Uh, during those days, we also used to hear about concentrated technology. It was again a technology, but that was more fueled by that uh, the PV was, uh, was at a very high price and they thought that they can add values. But uh, with, the, with the scale going up, with China coming in, I think uh, today we don't, I, I don't think how many people of us would have really be hearing on the on the, on the concentrated technology. So it is totally washed out, right? Uh, even uh, thermal for that matter, it was a big push till 2011 that yes, we should have solar thermal. No one is really talking about it. So that technology is also came and just died down, right? So we really need to have our hands on that, though we all want to have good technology, Good, uh, 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 good returns on our investments, but as manufacturer, are we really there? Is the new technology helping us? And this I'm talking more particularly from the Indian perspective, not from the global perspective. <clears throat> so uh, this is more, uh, more a gyan that uh, there are largely three types of uh, uh, of technologies now if I ex exclude the thermal and, uh, and the concentrator technology, or in fact two. Uh, so one is thin film and other is the PV cell that we all talk about. And in PV also probably uh, uh, there, there are two, one is uh, the crystalline and other is mono. So I think in today's world, I'll say almost 90, 95% is, is controlled by uh, by the silicon uh, PV. Uh, the right hand side uh, graph shows that if, uh, what does the efficiency do? So if efficiency is increasing, there is a, there is a downward uh, uh, pricing. Uh, I can't really read from here, but maybe you can just uh, see what, uh, what would it do. So, uh, this also gives us uh, or raises question, am I investing in the right technology? Is my payback time and technology is just two years? Because what we see is every two years, three years, I mean, uh, we, we, we see that, okay, uh, a new technology has come. There is an improvement of about 2% uh, uh, into the efficiency. So now a, a plant which I had put in uh, two years back at say 16% is obsolete now. What do I do? So am I able to, able to get my money back with the profits in just two years time? Right? I think we need to, to really see what technology means to India, what technology means to us, and what are we doing? These days what I observe is we largely try to work on variable cost. Okay, I mean, any investment what we have done, we, we think that it's a sunk cost. And we are in fact forced to do that, we as finance people. Because then I think, oh, this is something which I have already burnt, right? So let me see what all I can recover. But would it really give me confidence in, my, in me in really investing into future technology? Right, probably no. So this is again uh, uh, another sheet which, uh, which echoes what I'm trying to say. Today we are uh, a standard uh, um, cell that I make. Then I have perk, then I have uh, uh, multi-contact, then uh, hit and back contact, hit, and whatnot, whatnot. 
So today, most of them may be into lab or maybe slightly into commercial, right? But by the time I really think that there is a value, probably the next technology is already knocking your door, right? Then similarly, there are, uh, I mean, uh, uh, a lot of technology or there is a change into the wafer also. P type, N type, black wafer, white wafer, I do not know. I am a finance guy, I do not know what colors all uh, <laughs> it really has, right? Sure. This thing is slow. Where should I point it? Okay. So, uh, this, also, this slide also shows this is the entire value chain of solar. So we generate uh, silicon, then we make uh, polysilicon, then we have wafering, then cell, module, and then the application, right? Today we largely talk about, in India at least, on cells and module. Uh, systems is basically a, 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 a off-take, that's a market or, or where we use these. So, I mean, we are just trying to point out on our, uh, on the cost front only about 12, 13%, right? Whereas the meat is more into, into uh, polysilicon development and wafering. What are we doing on that? Then what all are the government supports? I mean, if we see US gives N number of uh, of support, financial support, tax support, and you know things like that to to promote solar. Similarly, countries like Malaysia, Taiwan, China, they have a lot of incentives even for the rooftop and uh, and large project installation. In India, what we what did we do? Capital subsidy. Uh, unfortunately, it is uh, the manufacturer who or the EPC player who is to claim that money. Uh, Right? So that is really not playing much role. Then the, the, the companies which are already there into manufacturing, uh, many of them have died, right? DCR is not really of any help. Uh, government started, but WTO ruling, everything is washed out. So should I really expand? Should I trust government? Should I do what? So, I mean, I'm not trying to really uh, uh, put questions on anyone or on the government or, you know, things like that. But as finance person, I think we really need to have questions and we should have, unless until good answers and convincing answers, I think uh, it would be. No. Then this, this slide shows that, uh, I mean, China has taken a great leap. So can they, you wrap up? They, they make we'll all press for time. Sorry? We'll press for time, so. Okay, sure. Okay, China makes about 44% of uh, polysilicon, whereas they consume almost 83% of it. So that's the volume that uh, Chinese are in. Similarly, the other graphs also shows, so which means I mean, China is something which is, uh, which is, uh, which is a, a factory for the entire globe. So should we be there as India? Can we really compete there? Uh, this again shows that, okay, uh, I mean, what government financing support is there? I mean, um, we as individual companies now probably cannot really invest into R&D and, you know, uh, other technologies and innovations, et cetera. Whereas, Chinese have acquired various company, various R&D and uh, innovation companies world over with the government help. So they are, I think, miles and miles ahead of us on that matter. So should we be really there in manufacturing all these? Next, please. Now, even uh, when we say China, so these are, this is a graph of all the, or most of the tier one Chinese company. Here you will see, except for Canadian Solar and Jinko, who are making very marginal 1, 2, 3% profits, the rest of the companies are into losses. So they all are large player, big players, having multiple gigawatt capacities, right? 
having latest technology, they all offer you 18 plus or maybe to the extent of 19% efficiencies. I mean, they have all the right parameters, all the right support, and still they are into heavy losses. So should I really invest into technology and manufacturing? Uh, these are again uh, uh, macro constraints. So where is my policy? 80% of, uh, uh, of the items are uh, imported. So which means I have a foreign uh, currency risk as EPC player also, right? Then uh, growing preference towards green energy means again there would be a, a price uh, cut because market can only grow when there is a reduced uh, uh, reduced um, uh, selling prices. Then uh, rapid evolution of cell and module technology will lead to obsolescence. So I mean as I was saying today if I buy any technology two years later it is more or less obsolete. Right, so I need to provide uh, budgets and you know things like that. So these are, uh, I think, in summary, what all questions that I had been asking on each slide. I think that's the food for thought. So that's something uh, which I had. So are we looking for the best of our investments? I think that's something that I would like everyone to think about. Thank you.